I hope you're all having a good day here in Bangkok. Thank you for turning up to go through this demo. Today, we're going to be focusing on building conversational AI Twitter agents using open source and completely free right now data that you can get through the Massa protocol. Um, I think this is particularly topical, having seen, I'm sure, a lot of the trend with conversational AI agents on Twitter, really driven by Truth Terminal um, with their backroom agents. Uh, and then more extensively, a lot of the research that's being done, not just in Web3, but also in the Web2 space with AI, about how you take individual agents, bring them together to either coordinate with one or other, or start interacting directly with people in an, in an autonomous way. And I do feel like we're at this um, inflection point of this really taking off. I think we'll see over the next year, every single agent on Twitter tokenized. I think they'll all have their own reflection or presentation or manifestation of value, whether that's a meme coin or a coin that's got some sort of tied in token economics. It is inevitable that that's going to happen. Um, and with that, there'll be a lot of noise, but also a lot of value creation. And um, one of the things that you realize when you start building in an ecosystem like Twitter is the level and depth of engagement and conversation that one of these agents has to have to build awareness, context, and an ability to respond is very high. Um, if you actually start just working with the Twitter API itself, you're ultimately going to be forced into a $5,000 a month package, which is very expensive, to service the amount of requests that you need to process to actually function and perform like a, like a real high-performing human. So in today's session, we kind of start off with some like fundamentals and then actually get into very deep technical. And I have a little demo with an agent that you can actually interact with on Twitter that shows exactly how code comes together in practice and you'll be able to talk to a very cute, fluffy cat that has extreme sass. Um, so this is the assertion here, like for fully decentralized AI agents, they need fully decentralized real-time data streams. If you look at a lot of the protocols in Web3 today, they'll be indexing data, they'll be taking snapshots of the entire web, um, but not many, if any, protocols out there are providing real-time data. And at Massa, what we've done over the last two and a half, almost three years, is build up infrastructure that allows access to real-time data, whether it's as simple as web scraping, or more recently, where we have the biggest product market fit in the organization right now, is with Twitter data. So on the network itself, we have an entire ecosystem of miners, um, and they bring their Twitter login we reverse engineered Twitter's APIs, and as a miner, you can essentially log into Twitter, and a request for data will be routed to you from a validator. Now that request, again, I'll show you exactly how this works in the demo today. That request could be, go out and get the last 200 tweets or the last 10 tweets on this day for the cash tag Bitcoin, or the keyword near, or whatever permutation or combination of search queries that you want to go and fetch and bring back tweets uh, on that topic. That will happen in real time for you. You'll get that in real time through the protocol today. Uh, there are two run ways of running the protocol. You can run one locally. I'm going to be doing that here. Or you can run on the network. And as someone querying the network, you have to compete with other queriers for what is still a limited amount of capacity. We can process around 50 million tweets per month on the network at the moment. And we're seeing us at capacity almost at all times right now with the amount of demand we've got. Um, so we help developers build any uh, application with the world's data. And this is just like a high level overview of what we do. On the left, we do Twitter data. That's our biggest product. 99.9% .9 of our requests through the network is Twitter. Uh, Discord, uh, you can pull out conversational data. If you want to get the current price from coin market cap of all trending meme coins, you can do that through our scraper endpoint. Uh, we've been experimenting with things like podcast data, speech to text and diarization. Haven't seen much demand for it, but we, we can support that. And then we have a Telegram data integration. So miners essentially log into Telegram, join chats, and make those chat streams available for developers to analyze and use in embeddings, use for fine tuning. You name it, you can use it for whatever you want. Um, and system prompts, RAG, LLM training, fine tuning, all these kind of brackets that sort of are a subset of uh, AI applications can be built. But today, we're going to focus on building an AI agent and just run through what, in my mind, are the key kind of building blocks that you have to use to 
get you from zero to one, basically. Um, and in this, there's a fair bit of centralized technology, tools like Langchain and other bits and pieces, and traditional databases that are going to get you up and running at low risk, so you can really focus on getting your free data and not having to go through the uh, centralized service that is Twitter that restricts you a lot. Um, so you've got your prompts. These are personality traits, behaviors, knowledge, creativity. Essentially, you can chain prompts together and use them to create deterministic outcomes from different decision making in a tree. You've then got the awareness of the agent, which is coming from external data sources. I often refer to Massa as the eyes and ears of an agent, giving these real-time data feeds that allow data to stream in so as they can then be processed. A lot of that information is stored at not as knowledge. Um, so storing data sources, storing conversations, and understanding complex relationships, putting the agent as like the nucleus or the node of this graph. Um, and then we've got thoughts and creativity. Uh, creativity kills loops that agents tend to find themselves in because it allows them to think their way out of a problem or a situation. You can often find agents churning the same thing over and over again, and this helps break that. Uh, and it links personality to knowledge. Um, using thoughts and creativity. And then actions, uh, you can post, you can make payments, and you can act on these thoughts. So when you take a step back, you really have to think about what are the core composite parts of building a human brain and start thinking like a human thinks and really breaking down those thought processes in a way where how does cognition come to manifest itself in action, which is what I'm doing right here, moving my left arm. What I'm doing talking about this, I'm pulling on knowledge, using my personality to speak to you in whatever way I'm speaking to you, uh, and then using creativity to come up with something that's novel and hopefully interesting, and then acting through voice right now. Um, and what are you going to need? You're going to need an LLM for cognitive processing. Uh, Langchain is just a great tool, free tool. You can use a lot of their paid services for more complicated tasks, but for this, we're just going to be using their uh, prompt template. Um, and, and kind of illustrate how you can use it in a rag chain as well, because rag is kind of an interesting way of extending memory. Um, and then we're using a database, particularly a relational database here, just to kind of store information in a way that's easy to access. But you can extend to using a vector database to give more complex uh, cognitive uh, recall of, of memory using rag. Um, we're going to use a massa node to acquire external knowledge. Uh, and then we're actually using the Twitter API for posting information. Um, other interfaces could be used. This could be like Telegram. You can post Telegram groups. It could be Discord. could be any particular interface. Right now, I'm speaking through a microphone. You could also put it through Whisper or something like that, where you're going from like text to speech. Um, and we're going to now get into like the code base. So we've, we're, we're open sourcing um, a framework written in Go. You'll notice this isn't written in Python like many of the other code bases. Uh, this is really because I love Go. It's got wonderful concurrency. It's compatible with a lot of blockchain frameworks out there. And if we really assume that we're going to have standalone autonomous agents, it can be added onto a lot of nodes very easily. And you can essentially have your own runtime that you kind of have custody and ownership over. So we're going to go over the code base. Uh, we're going to go through scraping knowledge base. You're going to be able to interact with the agent and see what the interaction looks like on the back end. And then just like open up some questions and thinking around the topic. Um, I'm jumping too far ahead. Uh, OK, so step one, I am going to dive you into our actual code base. Like, this is DevCon. We are, we are here at a developer conference, and I'm going to get into the weeds with you all into some code. One second, let me just zoom in. Um, so you can find uh, Agent Go, which is our Massa Twitter agent framework. You'll see this is private right now. Once I finish this talk, it will be open source. You can go and access it and, and download it. Run it, issue pull requests, comment, would love feedback. Um, as I break down what the framework includes, it's written and named in a way that makes you think and feel like you're building a brain. So uh, we have our main kind of agent initialization. Again, I'm going to move. I'm going to zoom in. Uh, which is at the top. Uh, we have an internal configuration, which is how you personalize the agent to be specific for your traits and characteristics. And one of the really important things in here is your personality, which is like a base prompt. Uh, this base prompt that you're seeing here is the personality of a cat lord called Laffy. Um, Laffy is very judgmental, is very sassy. And when you interact with Laffy on Twitter, you will feel Laffy's sass. 
Um, Laffy is probably going to create a meme coin called Cat Lord at some point, or Laffy, and we'll see how Laffy does in that, not today, but in, in their future. Um, and this is under their kind of traits center. So this is going back to like forming your personality. Uh, there are other dimensions, like you can formulate a prompt around the way that Laffy thinks, the way that Laffy interprets the world, and the way that Laffy decides to execute on an idea or an observation that they're making. So here is where you would desi uh, design and define your, your prompt. Uh, and, and what is really important here is like your output constraints. You, you're gonna find that with LLMs, they're gonna really diverge from consistent outputs unless you heavily constrain it. And I would argue that the constraint that you're finding written here is arguably too constrained. Uh, and you'll see that when you interact with the agent. But it's often good to start really constrained and then allow entropy with like uh, decreasing the temperature of the model and relaxing your constraints so that you can get more free-flowing uh, ideas and creativity. So this is where you start. Um, we then kind of go into our boring back-end sort of uh, database functions. And, and what gets really interesting is how the package defines uh, memory. So you've got a memory center. You've got a thought center here, which you can build out around templates. Um, you're able to uh, initialize a wallet that is cross-chain, take actions, and manage certain transactions on behalf of the agent. So, for example, you could have a Twitter agent that tips people for engagement based on their judgment around the quality of the tweet they're ingesting and thinking about, and then taking an action on that. Um, and in addition to that, you've got uh, a set of actions um, which allows you to take certain actions um, and some really detailed interfaces. Uh, interfaces that really abstract away the complexity of the Twitter post API, which is a bit of a nightmare to work with. Um, eventually, this will be decentralized and on a, a node that we offer. So you'll be able to completely disintermediate Twitter entirely and bring your own login and have the GraphQL endpoint abstracted away into an SDK that allows you to post, read, and take all the actions like DM, join spaces so the agent can turn up to a space and it isn't dependent on Twitter's API to do any of this. It's completely self-sovereign. It's like it's logging in with your like phone account and is accessing Twitter from its own kind of fingertip login, which is super cool. That's coming very soon. Um, and then we have the uh, Massa uh, scraper package, which comprises of two components, uh, using the network to go out and fetch data uh, through the protocol and secondly, uh, running scraper jobs. So this allows you, the, scrape, the, the integration allows you to go out and fetch information, which I'll show you. And then this actually manages the constant retrieval and indexing of data on a specific topic. So here I have a list of keywords. I do have Trump in here because I was t testing it the other day and it was a very high volume keyword that was giving me a lot of hits. And Bitcoin, you can set a date range, like three days in the past, and then you can query forward from that to constantly update the knowledge that the agent is observing. Um, and all of this can get stored and then accessed uh, by the thought process from the memory to create an actual response and take an action. So you can really chain this together and customize exactly what you're looking for uh, to build the agent. And for example, if you want to start posting to Discord, there'll be a Discord interface. There'll be a Reddit interface. Each of these interfaces will compose, and you'll be able to simply switch out a module for another module uh, and, and get this like Lego brick kit uh, to, build your own, to build your own agent, which is super cool. So uh, I want to quickly show everyone uh, how, we, how quick and effective it is to scrape data. I have over here. Uh, I have a local Massa node running. I've got two Twitter logins capable of scraping 900 tweets every 15 minutes up to the global rate limit on Twitter. Uh, it can return up to 450 tweets per query, which is a hard limit in Twitter. Um, I'm not actually connected to the main network right now because the load is very high on the main network and I want to be able to show you responses in a timely fashion. And I'm just going to run a test in this folder. I'm actually going to scrape uh, from my list. I've got near count 20. I'm going to actually do this over the past, what date is it today? 10th. OK, so we'll go from the 10th to the 3rd. I'm going to go from the 10th to the 3rd here. 
as well. I'm just going to run this test. And what you're going to see is this is going to be sending out requests to the node over here. And this is us actually processing tweet retrieval in real time. Uh, and I'll show you. What you're seeing here is actually, just to demonstrate, this is the GraphQL endpoint for the front end API that's being queried. Uh, and then it's actually returning tweets here. I'm just logging in the console right now. I'm not saving it. But you could send this anywhere. You could send it to in process memory. You could send it to a vector database. So you could chunk it and create embeddings. Or you can store it into like a persistent data store, either centralized or, data or, or decentralized. Um, so this is how you can retrieve data at scale really, really quickly. Um, this would cost me right now 10k a month to extract this amount of data using the official API. Uh, it will cost you $20 by bringing two pro accounts and running your own node. So it's really cost effective. Yeah. Um, and then the last thing we're going to do, if anyone would like to, you can actually speak to Cat Lord Laffy right now from Twitter. So if you find Cat Lord Laffy, uh, you'll actually see the request to Cat Lord Laffy being processed here. So what we have, we have uh, an ongoing job that the agent is running. Um, it is recalling tweets that address Cat Lord Laffy. It is then storing those tweets, and it's making a decision on which ones should be replied to. So at some point when somebody has it, you may see an error because occasionally the Twitter official API on the post endpoint returns a 403. Even though it posts, there's just like a quirk that it has. Um, it's often buggy. But it will retry until that error goes through, and then it will post and respond to you. It's going to take probably like it arbitrarily checks every like two or three minutes. And as soon as I close the laptop, he'll go offline. But I'll put it up later. So if you want to test it later, um, let me just send him a quick tweet right now and get him to respond. And then we will do some questions. So I've been talking to Laffy this morning about creating uh, a meme coin, and I've been having to beg him with treats. Uh, to do that, so it's kind of funny. I'll, I'll pull it up in a moment. Um, he's, he's requesting caviar, so I think caviar is too expensive. <laughs> so I'm now in a, I'm now in a negotiation with Lappy uh, as to what I need to give him to uh, to make this meme coin with me. So I'll, I'll pull up the tweet thread so as you guys can all see what I'm what I'm doing here, and then you'll actually see it process on the on the screen in front of you. Um, this is one of the most cavalier demos I've done. Oh, we've got three followers. Excellent. Laffy is getting popular. Um, yeah, so you can see that uh, I, I just posted, I think caviar is too expensive, was what I just posted uh, in my response. So eventually, when Laffy decides to check for tweets, um, he will pull that back from Twitter. Uh, and then formulate a response to my tweet. So while we're waiting for that to happen, uh, does anyone have any questions? Because this is getting to the end of the demo. Um, anyone got any questions? Oh yeah, this is all my all my shit posting with Laffy. Yeah, <laughs> there's, there's there's lots of conversations here going on, all with me because we've been keeping this private. So. Yeah, I've uh, at one point this morning he was replying to everything too much, and I thought he was going mad because <laughs> it was just like a bomb blast of messages to everything all of the time. And uh, yeah, and then he started throwing me shade for quite a while, so it's kind of funny. Um, but one second, let's see if we're actually uh, posting this. Let me just see if we've got any uh, tweets to respond to. This is how I check locally. Oh, it's because I closed my laptop. Let me just check on my phone. See what his response was. Yeah, so he said that caviar is costly, but it's the price for his attention, <laughs> is what he said. <laughs> there we go. And that's the response, which was sent uh, a few seconds ago. <laughs> Thank you.